You're listening to Real Estate for Real People, hosted by the Stone Sisters. The Stone Sisters have built an award-winning realty business, and they're here to share some of their knowledge with you. A new episode drops every Thursday. If you enjoy the show, please share it with a friend and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And visit www.stonesisters.com for more information just like this. Hi there. Thank you for joining us again. We've got another episode of Real Estate for Real People. And today it's just Shannon and I, and we're going to talk about... So we're going to talk about the top three things of what you should learn to do or sort of a checklist when you're moving to a new city. So whether you're moving to Kelowna, whether you're moving to Victoria, Toronto, it doesn't matter where you're moving, but here are some tips of when you're moving to any city, what you should do. Yep. So So first number tip. Number one tip, and of course we're biased. This is what we do for a living. We're realtors. But I think find a good, trusted, well-respected realtor who's an expert in that community. Yeah. A local person who's been in the community for a long time. And even a quick phone call. Mm -hmm. Um, We have lots of conversations with buyers when they're looking to move here. They're just starting their search coming from Toronto or, you know, Alberta or wherever they're coming from and have lots of questions. And I think we kind of give them that roadmap as to, you know, we ask those questions. Are you a family or, you know, what is your, you know, what what are you interested in? What sort of areas? And then we can sort of guide them on the process and guide them on the first steps of what to look for. Well, even the things, you know, one of the things we talk about is, are you, are you inside dwellers or outside dwellers? You know, do you want to, do you spend a lot of time outside and, and if so, then you're going to want a home with a big patio or if it's a, you know, a condo with a big deck or. You- or if you're a sun worshiper, because like for here, and I'm sure it's similar in other cities, the sun changes where you are. So if you're Direction on the- Direction is so important. It's so important. And some people really like the hot, intense sun and some people really don't. So that's, it's knowing those sorts of things, yeah. you know, water. There's certain areas that, you know, how good is the water? How good is the soil? Right. Is- and that's where coming back to finding a good trusted realtor mm-hmm. who, who will actually give you some of that insight and, mm-hmm. and, or all of that insight. We call it insider information. Yeah. It's, it's- and it's easy to do with just a phone call. So if you're looking at exploring a new city, I think the number one thing is, is just set up a phone call, whether that's a Zoom call on video or just a phone call where you can ask those questions and you really can get an insight into what they deem as, as the area. So, so tip number two. So tip number two is sort of familiarize yourself with the area itself and be, get to know the locals. You know, there's different ways you can do that. There's lots of different Facebook groups. Um, so you can join those. You can join a newcomers group. Um, we have something here locally, which is a local um, news site. So we've got Castanet. We've got Kelowna Now. I'm sure every city center mm-hmm. has sort of their homepage, which has all the local information. Yeah, it's, it's really important. It can really give you a good sense of, of who, who, who the community is and, mm-hmm. and who's there and, and if that'll resonate with you. Keeping in mind that there can be lots of negativity and lots of, you know, I don't know, Debbie Downer stuff, I guess I'll use the phrase yeah. on, on some of these online forums. But, but you can get an overall sense of, of the fit and feel of a community, of the demographics of, of the age group of and you can really get a sense of the neighborhood. So if you had talked to your agent and they had given you a list of some neighborhoods that you think might be a good fit for you, then go and look on, you know, Facebook or some of those areas. And they often have, you know, little groups for those different narrow areas. Yes. So you can really dive deep into, okay, what do the neighbors feel like? Who's sort of here? Is it a family neighborhood? You'll get a really good sense of mm-hmm. that soon. Mm-hmm. What are the complaints that they're all talking about? And you'll just sort of get a really good feel of, of each different neighborhood, which I think is important. Very. So tip number three, this is going by pretty quick. Well, I thought tip number three was to join the group. I know, I messed them up, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Tip number three, I think, is is to really spend some time in a community. And it doesn't always happen uh, through COVID, of course, when real estate markets across North America were were so, so crazy busy that people bought, I mean, Kelsey this morning was still Mm -hmm. saying that one of our agents was saying that that people are still buying sight unseen. Mm -hmm. But Truly, now that you've got a little breathing room, these are big decisions. Mm-hmm. I think you really want to spend some time. And whether that's a weekend, a week, a month, you know, find an Airbnb yeah. is, is what I would really recommend mm-hmm. to people and, and sort of entrench yourself a bit in the town. And, and drive around those neighborhoods. You know, it's, it's one thing to get that sense online, which you will get a great sense, but then drive around those neighborhoods. Go to the grocery store as to where you think you're going to be grocery shopping. You've said that for years, hey? Mm-hmm. It's, it's funny, you know, Kelowna is a population of about 144,000 people. And you can go to a grocery store in one neighborhood compared to another. And it is like you are in two entirely different yeah, so true. towns, <laughs> provinces, countries even. It's and, true. 
it's it's a good thing that I you know again when when the market was so so busy people didn't have that luxury and you no. you really had to try you know rely and trust on that that realtor mm-hmm. and and maybe the online groups that you'd done but now with the luxury of a little bit more time mm-hmm. it's because it's expensive when you know moving yeah. across you know across a province across the country you know, in, in mm-hmm. British Columbia, we've got a property transfer tax. You, mm-hmm. It's expensive and you you don't want to move and then think, oh boy, I really shouldn't have done that and should have spent a bit more time. And something you can also do once you're here and you're able, you're, you know, you're renting at your Airbnb and you're driving around the neighborhoods, visit with the neighbors. Like if you pinpoint and find that house that you like, you know, drive up and down that street and tell the neighbors outside and just, you know, pick their brain on what they think, get a feel of what they're like. Yeah. I mean, neighbors are so important. And I think sometimes... We don't put so much importance on that. Yes. It's, and, it's a great point. People are really kind of reluctant to do it. Mm-hmm. And yet it's, it's tr- yeah, I mean, it can have huge impact. It's huge impact. And, you know, especially if you've got kids, isn't it so nice to know that there's other kids or, or, you know, just how many people are living in the house next door to you, or it's a rental, or it's yeah. good to know those questions, which you only get to know really if you get out of the car and go and meet the neighbors. Well, it's funny because this summer, uh, my husband and I were out for a bike ride and we were biking home. And there were some people standing with their beautiful yellow lab dog, like yours, Shannon, um, picking up their dog droppings. And and we biked past and they were, they were right up at the driveway at our place. And we said, oh, you know, thanks for doing that. Not everybody picks up and we started chatting with them and they were doing exactly this. They are, they were here in Kelowna visiting from Calgary, thinking of making a move and they were out and we stopped. We ended up chatting with them for 25 minutes. They ended up coming over and we had a beer later on and they're now looking at houses. <laughs> but it, it, <laughs> Perfect. I, good work. <laughs> I know. I, I, I tried. But it, I, think it, I think it just, you know, gave them a sense of, you know, the community of people mm-hmm. of... And everybody loves to help. I mean, you probably were thrilled to help that person. I mean, I yep. know it's our line of work, but everybody wants to help. Yeah. Um, and I think also, too, everybody loves to feel that they got to sort of pick their neighbors. So if they're yes. out on the street and they have a say that you move into that house, they're going to love that they have kind of the insider information of who's moving in there. Well, in Canada, you don't have to disclose if the reason that you're selling is because the neighbor's dog barks all the time mm-hmm. or, you, you know, you think the house is haunted. People can write things in a contract to say, you know, you you warrant that the house is not haunted to your knowledge. <laughs> but do you know that in the UK, they have to disclose that? So if you're selling because the neighbor's dog barks or the people are fighting all the time beside you or what have you, that has to actually be in writing or there's recourse to go back to them. Wow. I did not know that. (laughs) So another reason, get to know your neighbors. Well, it just, it does make sense because, uh, you know, you can, even when you come and you, uh, you know, you're moving to a place and you start looking at properties, Mm -hmm. the realtor sees it one way you see it. I mean, Mm -hmm. we've always been big advocates of go back and see it at least a second time. For sure. If you see it in the morning, go back and see it at night Mm -hmm. and, you know, walk around a few times and, and really get a sense. But you might not know that the house down at the end of the street is a grow up is it's so true. Y- you know, if the kids play basketball. I mean, yeah. you know, we've heard of houses where, where the, you know, great family next door loves to play basketball at 2 a.m. Oh, we had that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> so those are some of the things that it's good to know. So, yeah. so, um, so yeah, so the, the top three tips. So we have first tip number one, Find a really good local agent that can help answer all of your questions when you're even just starting to think about moving to a new city. Yeah, even if it's exploratory and you're not mm-hmm. sure or you, you you haven't made a big plan if you're going to move, they're all, you know, I think 99.9% of the time, they're going to be happy to give you lots of information and Absolutely. give you an opinion. And if you want a list of questions, what are the questions to ask? Let us know. We can provide those for you because there is some detailed questions yeah. as to what's the best way to get a sense of a city. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can do a podcast on that next. So yeah, second smart. one is, you know, learn the neighborhood, learn mm-hmm. the area, spend some time, get to know those neighbors. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is, you know, spend some time, I guess, is, yeah. is stay well, a while. Spend some time online because I think you yeah. can, you know, we're fortunate nowadays that there are these forums. There are mm-hmm. Castanet or Kelowna Now websites, Facebook. Google is, Earth is one. I mean, yep. Yep. Yeah. You can really get a very good sense. So you can do a lot of research behind the scenes, but yeah, you know, finally get your feet on the ground and, you know, it's people come and sometimes they do come to Kelowna and purchase on their first visit. But yep. really, I think spending at least couple of weeks in a perfect world, you know, I think you're far less likely to make a mistake. Well, I remember, and I'll just jump in with a quick story. I remember this is going years ago. 
oh my gosh, maybe 15 years ago. And we had a fellow that was moving here from Kamloops, which Kamloops isn't very far from Kelowna, for those of you that may not know. Um, and he was moving here from Kamloops. And Tamara, you were showing him. Mm -hmm. And he jumped in the car, relatively young guy, um, jumped in the car. He was so excited. And he's like, oh, I'm so excited today. <laughs> I remember this. I'm going to be buying my first house. I love this. I'm so excited. And Tamara looked at him and said, you are not buying a house today. Just so you know, that's not happening. Yeah. And he was like, but I'm so excited. I just want to buy a house. And she said, no, 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 no. You need to know the areas. Yeah. You need to figure out what the neighborhood is like. The people are like, we yeah. are not buying a house today. We are learning about the community today. And, so, you know, we did find him a house. It took about two weeks and we showed him lots. Yeah. I showed him, you showed him lots. He's still in the house. Maybe in hindsight, that wasn't such a good Yeah, move. what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, because he, I mean, he was so gung-ho, had his pre-approval in hand and truly, I think, would have bought the first house. I think so too. So, But you know, he made a great decision, bought a, a lasting home and mm -hmm. 15 years later is still there. So. so that's great. So if you have any other real estate questions or anything we can help with, we are always available to help. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Estate for Real People. If you want to reach out to the Stone Sisters, visit www.stonesisters.com. This podcast was produced by Podigy Podcasts. See you next time.